very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. As we are about to turn into a brand new year, we have for you a compilation of key events that occurred throughout the past 12 months. This is Flashback 2023. We begin tonight with the eventful month of July. The government deployed 45,000 police and several armoured vehicles overnight to tackle the worst crisis of President Emmanuel Macron's leadership since the Yellow Vest protests. France's Interior Ministry said 994 people had been arrested on one night and 875 the previous night. Nahel, a 17-year-old of Algerian and Moroccan descent, was shot during a traffic stop on June 27 in the French capital's Nanterre suburb. On July 2nd, Russia launched an overnight drone attack on Kyiv after a 12-day break with air defense systems preliminarily destroying all targets on their approach. On July 8th, President Vladimir Zelensky brought home from Turkey five former commanders of Ukraine's garrison in Mariupol a highly symbolic achievement that Russia said violated a prisoner exchange deal engineered last year. Zelensky gave no explanation for why the commanders were being allowed to return home. Turkey's Directorate of Communications did not immediately respond to a request for comment. A ceremony to welcome home the soldiers was later held in Lviv when Zelensky made an address praising the men as heroes. On July 16, the last ship to travel under a UN broker deal that allows a safe Black Sea export of Ukrainian grain left the port of Odessa earlier ahead of the deadline to extend the agreement. Russia has not agreed to register any new ships and the initiative expired on July 17th, with Moscow refusing to extend it. On July 17th, two people were killed and their daughter was seriously injured after blasts on the Crimea Bridge, Russian-built bridge linking the annexed Crimean Peninsula to the Russian Krasnodar region, a major supply artery for Russian troops fighting in Ukraine and a prestige project that was personally opened by President Vladimir Putin. On July 19th, Russia launched an extensive air attack on the Ukrainian city of Odessa for a second night in the row, an assault dubbed by authorities as a hellish onslaught meant to destroy the possibility of shipping Ukrainian grain from its ports. The military said the strike hit a grain and oil terminal, damaged tanks and equipment for loading. The attack started a fire at a port and at a commercial warehouse on the outskirts of Odessa. On July 20th, Russia attacked Odessa in the third successive night of war strikes on the southern Ukrainian port city, killing one person. According to Odessa Regional Governor Oleh Kipper, a security guard was killed and at least eight others were hurt, including a child. On July 19th, Ukraine's 14th Motorized Brigade fired artillery shells from US-made M109 self-propelled howitzer at Russian military positions near Kupanyesk. Ukraine took delivery of cluster bombs from United States munitions banned in more than 100 countries but has pledged to only use them to dislodge concentrations of enemy soldiers. US President Joe Biden announced he would send cluster weapons to Ukraine on July 2nd. On July 23rd, a Russian air attack on Ukraine's southern port of Odessa killed one, injured nearly 20, including four children, and also destroyed six houses and a department building. Drove footage showed the extent of damage to the Spaso Preborazensky Cathedral or Transfiguration Cathedral following the attack. The assault left floors covered in rubble and chunks ripped off of ornate walls. On July 24th, Ukraine launched drones attacks on Moscow but were intercepted and destroyed. State news agencies reported that drone fragments were found two kilometers away from the ministry's buildings. Calling it a terrorist attack, the defense minister said on his Telegram messaging app that there were no casualties in the attack. According to Mayor Sergei Sobainin, on July 30th, Ukrainian drones attacked Moscow again, but there were no casualties. On July 31st, a Russian missile attack on southern Ukrainian city of Kriovyary killed at least four people, including a 10-year-old girl and her mother, and buried several others under the rubble. On July 3rd, Israeli forces hit the city of Janine with drone strikes during one of the biggest West Bank incursions in 20 years. In two days, 12 Palestinians, at least five of them gunmen and one Israeli soldier were killed. Around 100 people were injured and 20 of them were seriously injured. The Palestinian Red Crescent said it evacuated 500 families from the camp, around 3,000 people. The operation, which the army said was aimed at destroying militant infrastructure and weapons in the Janine refugee camp, was launched with a drone strike and over 1,000 troops were deployed. Israeli forces uncovered underground explosive caches, one concealed in a tunnel under a mosque, confiscated 1,000 weapons and arrested 30 suspects. Security threats from Moscow and Ukraine and Sweden's membership were on the agenda at the NATO summit that opened in Vilnius, Lithuania on July 11th, against a backdrop of Ukraine's long-awaited counter-offensive. The United States, Britain and global allies prepared to unveil new security assurances for Ukraine at a NATO summit designed to protect the country from future attacks while Kyiv strives towards membership of the alliance. 
Ukraine has been pushing for rapid NATO membership while fighting a Russian invasion unleashed in February 2022 that has killed tens of thousands and displaced millions. Southern Europe sweltered under a fierce heat wave on July 13th and 14th with a warning from the European Space Agency, whose satellites monitor land and sea temperatures, that Italy, Spain, France, Germany and Poland are all facing extreme conditions. Temperatures broke Europe's current record, 48.8 Celsius, recorded in Sicily in August 2021. Greece closed the ancient Acropolis during the hottest part of the day on July 14th to protect tourists. The month was confirmed the hottest July on record on August 8th by the European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Panel and NASA's Goddard Institute for Space studies in New York. 22 people have died, 14 were missing and thousands evacuated in South Korea as of July 15th, according to ministry data, as a third day of torrential rains caused landslides and the overflow of a dam. On July 17th, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol blamed authorities' failure to follow disaster response rules as a death toll from days of torrential rain rose to 40, including dozen people found dead in a submerged underpass. Floods have claimed dozens of lives during rainy seasons as weather patterns became more extreme. A wildfire which was raging on the Greek island of Rhodes for five days forced hundreds of people to flee affected villages and beaches by land and sea on July 22nd. Coast Guard vessels and more than 30 private boats evacuated at least 2,000 people, including tourists from beaches close to the areas of Kyotari and Lado in the southeastern part of the island. The U.S. military was scrambling on July 18 to determine the fate of an American soldier who had made an unauthorized crossing of the inter-Korean border into North Korea. While on an orientation tour of Joint Security Area on the border between the two areas, King crossed into North Korea willfully and without authorization. On July 20th, U.S. Special Envoy for North Korea Sung Kim commented on Private Travis King ahead of a trilateral meeting with Japan and South Korea on countering threats from the DPRK. The meeting took place amid heightened tensions around the Korean peninsula. King's unauthorized crossing into North Korea came the same day as a U.S. nuclear-armed ballistic missile submarine visited South Korea for the first time since the 1980s. North Korea launched two ballistic missiles into the sea early on July 19th. Israeli police used water cannons to disperse protesters in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv on July 24th. Demonstrators took to the streets in their thousands as Parliament ratified the first bill of judicial overhaul sought by the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu after last gap compromise efforts collapsed and failed to ease constitutional crisis that was convulsing the country for months. By evening, thousands had taken to the streets across the country, blocking highways and scuffling with police. Presidential guards were holding Niger President Mohamed Bazoum inside his palace in the capital Niamey on July 26 as regional leaders organized a swift mediation mission to try to prevent another potential power grab in West Africa. Crowds of Bazoum supporters protested outside the National Assembly in Niamey and called for the president's release before they were dispersed by police. Leaders of a coup in Niger declared General Abdurrahman Etiani as the new head of state on July 28, days after saying they ousted President Mohamed Bazoum in the seventh military takeover in Western Central Africa in less than three years. The upheaval has raised concerns about the security of a region where Niger has been a key ally of Western powers seeking to contain insurgencies by groups linked to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. Tiani was the head of the presidential guard whose soldiers shot Bazoum inside his palace on July 26, leaving confusion over who was in control. Leaders from the West African regional bloc ECOWAS meeting at an emergency summit on July 30th gave Niger military leaders one week to reinstate ousted President Mohamed Bazoum or face financial and travel sanctions at a no-fly zone to and from Niger. Chadian President Mahmoud Idris Debi late on July 30th posted an image of ousted Niger President Mohamed Bazoum, the first since the Hunter takeover that took place. And that was a summing up of key events that occurred in July of 2023. Join us after the break for more. Welcome back. Moving on to the month of August now, which proved to be extremely testing for the former U.S. President Donald Trump and Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan. Let's take a look. Donald Trump on August 1st was charged with a four-count indictment alleging the former president conspired to defraud the U.S. by preventing Congress from certifying President Joe Biden's victory and to deprive voters of their right to a fair election. Trump on August 14th was hit with a fourth set of criminal charges, accusing him of efforts to overturn his 2020 election loss as he campaigns for the Republican nomination in 2024. 
The Georgia case, a sprawling 98-page indictment listing 19 defendants and 41 criminal counts, stemmed from a phone call in which Trump urged Georgia's top election official, Brad Raffensperger, to find enough votes to reverse his narrow loss in the state. Raffensperger declined to do so. The Georgia case, a sprawling 98-page indictment listing 19 defendants and 41 criminal counts, stemmed from a phone call in which Trump urged Georgia's top election official, Brad Raffensperger to find enough votes to reverse his narrow loss in the state. Raffensperger declined to do so. A historic mugshot of the former president was released on August 24 after he was booked at an Atlanta jail on the dozen felony charges. Trump has denied any wrongdoing in both cases and said they were politically motivated. Supporters of Niger's junta, which declared a coup in the West African country on July 26, marched in the capital Niamey on August 3 to protest against West African sanctions placed on the country over the ousting of elected President Mohamed Bazoum. The West African bloc ECOWAS said on August 17th it stood ready to intervene militarily in Niger should diplomatic efforts to reverse the coup there fail. Pro-coup demonstrators flooded Niger's capital on August 20th, calling on foreign powers to engage in diplomacy with their military rulers the morning after Tiani called for a three-year timeline to reinstate constitutional rule. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan was arrested and later imprisoned in Lahore on August 5th after a court sentenced him to three years years in prison for illegally selling state gifts, potentially barring the opposition leader from contesting an upcoming election. The arrest was the latest in a series of blows that have weakened Khan's political standing after he fell out with Pakistan's powerful military and his party splintered. August was the hottest on record globally, the third straight month in a row to set up such a record following the hottest ever June and July, according to data from the European Union Climate Change Service. Large parts of Central Europe and Scandinavia saw torrential rains which led to flooding, while Greece, Spain and Portugal saw droughts that led to wildfires. In North America, Alaska saw glacial floods, while Hawaii suffered devastating wildfires that left at least 115 dead. Leaders of the BRICS nations met for a summit in Johannesburg over August 22nd to 24th. At its conclusion, the BRICS bloc of developing nations agreed to admit Saudi Arabia, Iran, Ethiopia, Egypt, Argentina and the United Arab Emirates in a move aimed at accelerating its push to reshuffle a world order it saw as outdated. An Indian spacecraft landed on the moon on August 23rd in a mission seen as crucial to lunar exploration and India's standing as a space power. Mercenary chief Yuvgoni Prigozhin was listed as a passenger on a private jet that crashed on August 23rd, killing all those on board. Russian authorities later said genetic testing confirmed the Wagner boss was killed. Prigozhin, 62, spearheaded a mutiny against Russia's top army brass on June 23rd to 24th, which President Vladimir Putin said could have tipped Russia into civil war. August 24th marked eight 18 months since Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Russia continued to hit different regions in Ukraine throughout August, from Kyiv to Odessa, in drone and missile strikes, while Ukraine also hit Russian targets. Moscow said Ukraine was responsible for a number of drone attacks in its territory, including Moscow City. Ukraine's coat of arms replaced a Soviet-era hammer and sickle plate on Kyiv's largest monument on August 6. The Netherlands and Denmark promised to deliver F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine during a visit by Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to Denmark. Military officers in oil-producing Gabon said they had seized power on August 30th and had put President Ali Bongo under house arrest, stepping in minutes after the Central African state's election body announced that he had won a third term. The officers who said they represented the armed forces declared on television that the election results were cancelled, borders were closed and state institutions were dissolved after a tense vote that was set to extend the Bongo families more than half century in power. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More on Flashback 2023 right after this. Now we have entered the third and final month planned for tonight's run-up of Flashback 2023, which is the month of September, during which an Iraqi wedding turned into a mass funeral within seconds. 
A 6.8 magnitude earthquake in Morocco's High Atlas Mountains on September 8 left more than 2,900 people dead. The earthquake, Morocco's deadliest since 1960, destroyed many hamlets with traditional mud brick, stone and rough wood houses, specific to the amazing speaking Atlas Mountains. Several CCTV footage shows the moment of the earthquake, sending buildings crashing and people fleeing late on Friday, September 8, in an earthquake that left more than 2,900 people dead. Rescuers search for quake survivors under rubble in Vergan, Morocco. The government sets up camps to help those displaced by the earthquake. Families crowded together inside tents at camps in Amismas. Storm Danielle and a collapsed dam swept floods across eastern Libya, destroying large parts of the eastern coast city of Derna. The UN confirmed more than 4,000 deaths from the disaster, while of 8,000 500 people remained unaccounted for for weeks after the disaster. A further 40,000 were displaced across northeast Libya. Libyan Prime Minister Abdul Hamid al daiba said on September 12th, the flood-ravaged country did not need ambulances but help recovering bodies from the sea. The scale of devastation across the flood struck an eastern Libyan city of Derna was shown by satellite images from Maxa Technologies on September 13th. Libyan authorities demanded an investigation on the 14th of September into whether human failings were to blame for thousands of deaths in the worst natural disaster in the country's modern history, as survivors searched for loved ones washed away by floods. In Ukraine, at least 16 people were killed and 33 wounded on September 6th after an explosion at a market in Kostinovka. Kiev immediately accused Russia for targeting the market with a missile. Russia denied involvement and said Ukraine had fired 9M38 missile from a buck, surface-to-air missile system which struck the city. President Vladimir Putin said Russia would help North Korea launch satellites and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said Moscow had his full backing in its sacred fight with the West as they met September 13th as Cosmodrome in Russia's Far East. US and South Korean officials have expressed concern that Kim would provide weapons and ammunition to Russia, which has expended war stocks in more than 18 months of war in Ukraine. Moscow and Pyongyang have denied such intentions. Russia called on UN's highest court in The Hague on September 18th to throw what it said to be a hopeless flawed case, challenging Moscow's argument that its invasion of Ukraine was carried out to prevent genocide. Relations have soared since Poland, Hungary and Slovakia decided to extend a grain import ban that was introduced to protect Protect farmers from a surge in grain and food imports from Ukraine after Russia's invasion. Poland was no longer arming Ukraine as it was focusing on building up its own stocks of weapons, the Prime Minister said on the 20th of September, as Warsaw stands towards Kiev shifts just weeks before an election. Azerbaijani forces took control of Nargono Karabakh, an enclave on its territory populated by ethnic Armenians, in a lightning operation that began on the 19th of September, triggering an exode of more than 100,000 Armenians in less than a week. Armenia accused Azerbaijan of ethnic cleansing, a charge denied by Baku, which has insisted the enclave's Armenians were welcome to remain in the territory. Baku had also insisted it has no intention of attacking Armenia itself. Armenian separatist forces in Azerbaijan's breakaway region of Nargona Karabakh surrendered and agreed to cease fire on the 20th of September. 24 hours after Baku began an offensive to restore full control of its territory. Armenian police on September 21st detained several people in Yerevan who blocked roads in protest against the surrender of breakaway Nargono-Karabakh region. Hundreds of protesters, angered by the government's inaction over the final collapse of Karabakh's Armenian authorities, clashed with police in central Yerevan. They demanded the resignation of the Armenian Prime Minister, Nikol Pashnyan, who proceeded over defeat to Azerbaijan in a 2020 war. A wedding hall in Iraq burned up in flames on the 26th of September, ripping through a packed wedding hall in Hamdania, killing at least 100 people with 150 people injured. Survivors said the fire began about an hour into the event where flares ignited a ceiling decoration as the bride and groom danced. Preliminary information indicated that the building was made of highly flammable construction materials contributing to its rapid collapse. And that is all we have planned for you on tonight's rendition of Flashback 2023. Join us again tomorrow for a complete recap of the months of October through to December. If you had missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.